One of our new favorite detectives is back, Benoit Blanc, played by the great Daniel Craig in Netflix's Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. Dan here. This is Dan Reviews it. Welcome to my spoiler-free review for the new film Glass Onion. This is on Netflix right now, but if you were lucky enough to uh, see it in a theater about a month ago, yes, they released it for a week around Thanksgiving uh, as part of Ryan Johnson, uh, the director, his deal with Netflix uh, that it went to theaters for at least a little bit and then uh, a month later went on Netflix. Usually when they do that, it's like it's in theaters and then the next week you can see it on Netflix, but they did a very interesting uh, release model here. Pretty cool. I was unfortunately unable to see it in its original theatrical run, but I have now caught it on Netflix, so uh, we can talk about it. Um, and Ryan Johnson would love for me to just call it Glass Onion, uh, not Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. He did not want that part of the the, uh, the the phrasing, and in fact, on screen it just says Glass Onion. So I guess we'll, we'll just continue to call it Glass Onion. But uh, it makes sense on Netflix's part because, um, you know, they're, they're sort of obviously doing their own thing over there, and a lot of times you only know about Netflix movies if you see them. So if it comes up on your screen, Glass Onion, you might not know what that is. But if it says Knives Out, you're like, oh, okay, I know what Knives Out is. Um, so anyway, Daniel Craig is back as Benoit Blanc. And in this particular one, he uh, is taking on a, a new case. He's the only repeat from that first movie. Because, of course, the first movie revolved all around a family. And, uh, you know, that, that case has been solved. Now, I did think maybe... His, his partner would be here, um, but but not so much. He is the only really uh, returning person. But uh, the new case is revolving around a tech billionaire named Miles Braun, played by Edward Norton. And uh, he has invited his closest friends um, to a, a party, and uh, some things go wrong. And the uh, guests include... Uh, people played by Kate Hudson, Janelle Monet, Catherine Hahn, Leslie Odom Jr., uh, Dave Batista, Jessica Henwick, Madeline Klein. Um, I think that's everybody. Uh, so, um, and, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, there's in the intro, like Kate Hudson's character is at this party. And so there's a lot of people, you know, revolving around her. Catherine Hahn is at home. She's a politician. So she's like with her family. It takes place at the beginning of COVID. Everybody's wearing masks. So there's a few other people involved in the movie. Um, but much like Knives Out, you know, the first one, this is a, a pretty contained cast, um, which makes sense because I guess they probably shot it partially during COVID. Um, from what I understand, uh, Ryan Johnson had uh, sort of the, the idea for the mystery itself before he actually wrote any of it. Um, so, you know, at, at what stage the, the COVID stuff and the Zoom stuff came into play, I'm not sure. But um, it, it did seem to kind of work for what we were doing here. So like the first one, Knives Out, we had the big, um, you know, knife uh, display or whatever you want to say, the, the art sculpture full of knives um, that was sort of the centerpiece for the questioning. And here there's a literal sort of glass onion uh, building that is kind of the hub of everything. And uh, Johnson has said that, um, you know, uh, this was all in the works and stuff before Elon Musk bought Twitter. So it just sort of is happenstance that there might be some some shades here of, uh, you know, a, a Musk-type character. Um, but anyway, Ryan Johnson, uh, listen, you know, even before the first Knives Out, uh, I just, I loved this guy. Uh, you know, I, uh, people poop on him because of the Star Wars movie he did, Last Jedi, which I, I don't care really either way about Star Wars. I thought that movie was fine. Uh, but Looper is an excellent, excellent movie. I think that's probably where I, I first kind of uh, realized who he was. And then he did a movie a few years earlier with Joseph Gordon-Levitt as well called Brick. I'm waiting for Joseph Gordon-Levitt to be in one of these Knives Out movies because uh, obviously they like working together. So, um, all right. So I guess we'll start with the positives, uh, which there are many. Um, I will say this is not quite as good as the first Knives Out movie. I gave that an A+. Plus. So, you know, it'd be hard to live up to that. And, and this one doesn't quite. But um, in terms of the positive... Uh, stuff, we see a lot of similarities between the two. Um, not that the mystery is the same, not that necessarily the, um, I mean, the, the, the personalities of people are somewhat similar, I guess. Um, but yeah, they're all kind of, you know, self-obsessed jerks and, um, you know, in, in varying degrees, Kate Hudson is an actress and so she's like a real dumb dumb. Uh, or some kind of socialite, like a Paris Hilton type or something. Um, so she's, you know, just kind of stupid, and they play that off. I'm not a huge Kate Hudson fan. I thought she did fine here. Um, 
you know, the, the real star of this is Janelle Monet, which I think is no surprise. She's great in everything. Um, but Daniel Craig, you know, d doing well uh, also. Ed, Ed Norton doing a great job, too. So, yeah, okay. So the acting, definitely part of it. Um, but I think a lot of the things that worked from that first movie, you know, having a compelling mystery, having different... Uh, no pun intended with the onion thing, but having different layers to that mystery, um, which I'm sure was intentional, you know, on Johnson's part that the onion is sort of the representation, um, you know, some, some witty dialogue and it's a lot of fun, you know, uh, so often, especially like when we look at what gets nominated for Oscars and stuff, oh, we just have to have the most dreary movies out there and we got to be depressed all the time. It's okay to go to the movies and just have a damn good time right? And this does that, just like the first one did. So, uh, you know, that's all great. Um, in, in the negative column, there's a few. Um, I actually don't think Daniel Craig is quite as charismatic here as Blanc, uh, as in the first one. Maybe it's because we know him a little better this time. Uh, maybe because the accent isn't laid on quite so thick, you know, which was, I think, a lot of fun in the first one. Chris Evans' character was kind of making fun of him and stuff. Um, we also get a little bit of a, uh, a twist on his personal life. He's, uh, living at least, or maybe in a relationship with, uh, Hugh Grant, who is just in one scene. I want to see that movie. Um, but okay. Um, but, you know, in, in terms of, I think, meatiness to the character, I'm not sure we got that as much as the first one, but he was very enjoyable to watch still. Um, and, uh, <laughs> the other problem is the length. It's a little too long. And and not once it really gets started, but I just, I think it takes a little while to get started. It is two hours and I want to say maybe 20 minutes or something, um, you know, which is okay. But I feel like the first one um, was closer to the two hour mark. It actually probably was also a little bit over now that I'm thinking about it. But um, I, I don't know. It sort of maybe flowed better. I think the, the intro to all these characters um, is a little different. This time, because it's over Zoom and it's over the COVID stuff. Last time, it was a little easier to introduce everybody together because the whole family was getting together for a party. So maybe maybe that is the issue with it. But it's not much of an issue. But I, I could have used maybe a little bit of a speedier path to get to the Glass Onion and to get to the Ed Norton character and, and kind of unfold that. Uh, but other than that, listen, this was a really great way uh, to, to spend a couple of hours. Um, one of the, the better movies I've seen at the end of this year, it hasn't been that great so far with like Avatar and stuff. And I just watched Babylon, which you'll see my review about soon. Um, so, you know, this is definitely one of the better ones out there. I would have loved to see it in a theater with a crowd of people. Like I saw the first glass onion, unfortunately, you know, like I said, with my schedule that did not happen over Thanksgiving, but we can all enjoy it together now over Netflix. I leave glass onion, a knives out mystery with an A minus. Definitely not as good as the first one, but a lot of, uh, of really similar things that, that worked for this. Um, so I'm looking forward to more of these. I know Johnson wants to make more, so I'm here for it. Thanks for watching Dan Reviews. We'll see you next time. Bye.